Fog can add a lot of beauty to your renders, something that the artist Gleb Alexandrov uses really well in his renders, as you see here. However, if you've ever tried to use it yourself, you've probably noticed that it takes a long time to render. So today we're gonna to be looking at three easy methods to speed up fog rendering. Now, volumetric lighting is something that I've been using a lot in my short film. And so I'm going to use one of my sets here as a practical example. And let's show you some of the numbers that we have here first. So if we go ahead and take a look at a normal volumetric setup, you can see that we're we're getting a 42 second render time. If we remove that volume, you can see it drops all the way down to about 27 and a half seconds. So it's adding, you know, about 14 seconds or so. If we come up here to this optimized technique I'm going to show you, you can see that it saves us a couple seconds per render, which doesn't seem like much, but if you account its effect on the volume alone, it's about a 15% increase. Then we'll take a look at using compositing to add our fog. And you can see this drops us down to 28 seconds, only adding one second, which is most likely just the compositor's time. And then lastly, I'm going to show you an array method, which I learned from one of the Blender behind the scenes videos on the charge video. And you can see here that dropped us from about 42 seconds to 31 seconds. So it only added about two to three seconds and gives us a pretty good result. So let's dive in and look at how we can achieve each one of these effects. First off, let's just take a look at optimizing our fog. So normally when you add fog to a scene, you would go ahead and just add a cube or other primitive shape around your scene. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to rendered view here. Now I'm rendering on the GeForce 4090 RTX. So it renders pretty quick in the viewport, even with volumetrics. So here you go, you can see that we have a fog set up here. And if I go ahead and delete these other notes, you'll see that you just plug a principal volume into the volume of the material. But however, have we seen that can jack up render time? So let's look at how we can go about improving this. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, I'm going to add a light path node. And what this does is allows us to use light paths as an input. And we can use the camera ray to kind of drive things and turn off some of the light bounces. It will affect the lighting ever so slightly, but not much to be noticeable. So we'll go ahead, add a mix shader node. We're gonna drag that here. We'll go ahead, plug the volume into the bottom here, grab the camera ray, plug that into the factor here, and then we'll take a transparent node and go ahead and put that into the top slot there. And that'll take off a couple of rays, but let's go ahead and do a few more here. And this could be technically a bit redundant, but if you come down here to ray visibility, you'll see that we have the rays that we can turn on and off here. Now, really, you can turn off everything but shadow and get almost identical results. So let's go ahead, turn those off. Lastly, by default, your render settings on your light paths are going to have 12 in the transmission, which is more than you need. Actually, what we can do is grab these transmission volume and transparent, click at the top here, drag down, type in two, that'll enter two into all of those fields. And then we can go ahead and hit render here. And then if we compare these in the results, you see that we saved about 10 to 15% on just our time added from the volumetrics. And you can see that there's not much difference in between these two, that this version's a little bit lighter because it's not affecting the lighting as much. However, we have, say, some time that could add up a lot over animation. However, if you're working on a machine that struggles to do volumetrics at all, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other methods. Now, next, I'm going to show you a method that I'm calling the array method, which I learned watching behind the scenes on the charge series on Blender's YouTube channel. And I went ahead and I reached out to them and asked if they minded if I made this video and they said, go ahead. So here we are. I'll link to that in the description as well. So what you're gonna wanna do is find the central focal point of your scene, which is here for my camera. And I'm gonna put the 3D cursor there. I'm gonna go ahead, add a mesh and a sphere. Then I'm gonna snap into my camera view here. I'm gonna scale this up so it engulfs the camera. I wanna make sure it's not interacting too heavily with any of the objects in my background. So I'm gonna leave it right around there. I'm gonna hit control one to add a subdivision and shade smooth, great. I'm gonna go ahead, call this fog fake. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can add a modifier. We're going to add an array modifier. And if I snap out here, you're going to see that it's going to create that off over there. So we're gonna go ahead, turn off relative offset. And I'm gonna switch into wireframe mode so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit A, shift A, and add an empty. And that will add at the center where that cursor was. I'm gonna go ahead and call this array scale. Then what I'm gonna do is with this sphere selected, I'm going to go ahead, click object offset. I'm going to go up here, select array scale. Then I'm going to grab the array scale and I'm just gonna scale this way up. And you can see now that it is adding spheres 
on an outward trajectory. And I can go ahead and grab these and I can keep adding more if I want. Although I found that two oftentimes works enough. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna snap into render view here and see what our scene is looking like. Now, if we go ahead and hit render view here, you can see that it has eliminated all of our lighting. So what we need to do is with our sphere selector, we're gonna create a new material. I'm just gonna call this fog fake. And we're going to use this BSDF node. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn specular down. We don't need that. We're gonna turn roughness up. Great. Now we're gonna set the alpha to a super low number, like 0.05. And you can see how we're starting to get a fog fall off and you can increase this number or increase the arrays and you can see how it will begin to add more depth there. I'm going to go ahead and maybe try something like 0.1 and you see that I'm getting a more natural fog fall off and I'm going to go ahead up here and we can use this to change our color. Now, if we come back to our previous examples using this method, you can see that from the regular volume to the array method, we get a pretty similar result and we reduced our render time by about 10 seconds. Uh, Part of the noise on the last shot. I forgot to let it uh, denoise. Anyways, moving on to the last method, which you've probably already heard of, is the mist path method. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and rendered out a frame to work with here in the compositor. Now, if you come over here to the right, you can click passes, turn on your mist pass, and then we're gonna go ahead and head over to compositing. Now, what we wanna do is use that mist pass here. So if I go ahead, plug that mist pass in, you can see what it is doing is giving us a distance from the camera Camera. As it's closer to the camera, it will get darker. Now, the dip pitfall of this method is that if you move your camera in and out in your scene, it will affect how this mispass does because it is not stationary. So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at adding a color ramp here. Drag that out, type in color ramp, and we'll go ahead and do color ramp factor. And I'll pull that in there. If I go ahead and plug this in here, you can see that we can control the fall off here. And we're going to use this to drive another node to mix in the fog. So let's go ahead and add in a mix node. Click that here. We'll put this one on the factor up here. And then what we're going to do is take that image here and plug that into the top slot here. And you can see that now we have kind of a fog in our scene. We can control the fall off here. Now, as I mentioned, this measures the distance. So it can be problematic if your camera is moving in and outwards of your scene. So the way you can fix that is you can actually animate this property right here to kind of match the motion of your camera. Now, this is looking a bit thick. So what I'm going to do is grab the white end here and just drag this down a bit. If I go ahead and click up here, I can go ahead and change the color there. And with this method, as we mentioned before, this uh, only took about you know 15 to 25% longer compared to the other methods. So this method is by far the fastest method. However, you will have the least amount of control. Now, none of these methods, except for the first one, will allow you to have volumetric lighting. However, I have some tricks to optimize and fake volumetric lighting that should work on most computers. Let me know if you'd like to learn about that in the comments below. And thank you for watching.